There are very few human beings, no matter what is the situation, they will be who they are. We must see this. I was talking in a… another town by the… starting with N <laughs> in Andhra Pradesh, I'm speaking in Nellore to a large group of school students. And then I say, okay, I'll take some questions. One little girl, fourteen-year-old girl, stands up and she says, Sadhguru, they are saying Rama walked from Ayodhya to Sri Lanka. Is it practical that somebody can walk from Ayodhya to Sri Lanka or is it just a story? Then I look at her and say, see, you are still a young girl. After a few years, you will find a man. When you find your man, do you want that kind of a man that if you get lost, he will walk all the way or he will think this is not practical and find a practical solution in his neighborhood? <laughs> what kind of a man do you want? Well, even the little girl knows what kind of a man she wants. <laughs> Now, <laughs> why this question I'm bringing this up is, I want you to listen to this carefully, not reacting all the bhaktas. Rama's life is a disaster, a continuous disaster. King born as a prince, coronated as a king, just married with his young wife, some political stuff ends up in the jungle. Living in the jungle, your… Uh, some television show may be showing it as some kind of a romantic affair, okay? Living in the jungle is not a romantic affair, believe me. I have individually, you know, by myself, I've lasted in the jungle for weeks on end by myself, eating out of the jungle. After three, four weeks when I came out into the town, people wouldn't recognize me. That's how it would be. So with a young wife, she's not a tribal woman, she's a princess. Living with her in the jungle is not a romantic affair, it's a tough life. Knowing that it's very difficult, his brother also follows him to assist both of them because he knows what will he do with this young woman in the jungle. Then as if that was not enough, his wife gets kidnapped, Sri Lanka. And then, because the wife means so much to him, he walks all the way, despondent, not a… not a nice trek, not knowing whether she is alive or dead or what has happened to her, he walks down all the way, builds up a Tamil army, <laughs> goes across, burns down a beautiful city, kills many, many people, gets back his wife, goes home. Now the wife is pregnant, no sonogram. <laughs> so he doesn't know whether it's a boy or a girl or boys or girls or what. This is important for a king. For a king, it's very important that he has a son because it has to continue. But then once again some political situation, he sends his fully pregnant wife to the jungle. She goes there, delivers two boys, he doesn't know. And then he gets into a battle with his own children. If at all, if there can be a true disaster in your life, in anybody's life, knowingly or unknowingly, you kill your own children, this is the worst thing that can happen to you. It almost happened to him. He almost killed them. Somehow, by fate, whatever situation, he did not kill them, he almost killed them. He did his best to kill them without knowing who they are. Then Sita dies without ever seeing him again. You call this a successful life? No. But we worship him. Why do you worship a failure like this? Because no matter what disasters happened, the man did not become angry, hateful, he did not lose his balance. He maintained his balance one hundred percent. He did not give up any of the values and ethics with which he lived. 
a continuous disaster, a serial disaster he is, but unmoved, untouched. It is this quality that we are bowing down to. We are not bowing down to him because he is a super success. He is a super failure, but within himself, do what you want. You cannot take away who he is. One of these incidents that happened in his life happened to most people, they would all be cracked up. Yes or no? Just one of these disasters happened in people's lives, they will crack up in their minds. Serial disasters, but total balance. We are bowing down to that quality because this is inner management. <laughs> if you go out to do things in the world, you cannot control what the world will throw at you. But what you make out of it is one hundred percent yours. You wouldn't mind stepping into any situation, facing anything in the world because you are in a blissful chemistry. Rama is in a peaceful chemistry. No matter how many troubles you throw at him, similarly if you are blissful chemistry, no matter how much nonsense somebody throws at you, you blissful.